Okay, that was Angie by Davy Graham, a 1964 recording. Um, very popular song. It's been popular since 1964. There have probably been a couple of hundred versions of it recorded, and many people play it. It's a fun song to play. It's an R.B. song. It's a folk song. It's a jazz song. It's a blues song. It's a lot of different things. So it's kind of a loose song built, built around what we call the descending minor progression. And in this particular song, we have four chords we're going to be concerned with with the main body of the song. A minor, G, F, E. It's kind of the staple of a lot of American R.B. tunes. So what he does is kind of interesting in this song is he starts off with the A minor. And then he keeps the A minor form, but when he moves to the next step down, he lifts his first finger on the second string, places his little finger on the sixth string at the third fret to get the G. Keeps his A minor form, brings the first finger over to the first fret on the sixth string, second finger back to the second string, first fret, to get the F sound. And then he goes straight to an E chord at the end. So the song is built completely upon A minor, G, F, and E7. So that's the main body of the song, and we have two variations upon a theme. And then we come to the second part of the song, which is he does a little monotonic bass line with a little lead run at the top. So you have a D note on the second string played with the third finger while you do the fourth on the bass. That's the second part of the song. Then we come to a turnaround in the song, which turns it around and gets it, recycles it back into the A minor section again, which is. So that is the third component of the song. The other one would be. The A minor, then completely open, sharpen E chord, without the bar to the second fret and then bring it down to the first position. So then we follow up with the turn. And then we have an ending to the song. So those are the components to the song. It doesn't get much more complicated than that. He does have a, a, a bridge break in the song, which is an A minor. Followed by a little riff on the bass strings. E7, then A minor again. E7. It resolves again, goes back into the A minor. So let's look at what he does then on the A minor section, which is the main body of the song. So we'll look at the right hand component here. We have a monotonic bass. Within the A minor, descending minor progression. So, first finger plays third string all the way through, second finger plays second string all the way through. So you can vary that as you go along. Uh, people have a tendency to just kind of improv the song as they move through it. So let's look at left hand again. We're doing the hammer on pull offs. And you can add that first string in occasionally if you don't do it too often. So, the great thing about a really good little riff is don't do it too many times. So 
when I play the song, I use the A minor section, I use the A minor, then to the G, then I will use my first finger and second finger, I'll switch them around to an F form. But I've also seen it played where they use the A minor, little finger, and then they'll drag the thumb over, hold the A minor, then go to an E. Some people prefer that, they find it easier to make the pull-offs there. For me, it's easier to do it the other way, but everybody's hand's different. So that's what we have so far. Now let's look at part two. I do a monotonic bass, then I do a little lead riff on top, on the second string. Over to the sixth string. Then I turn it back to A. Now add a little wrinkle to that and you do a little bend in it. Come up to the G with your third finger to get it back in. Okay, part three. Start with the A minor chord. Then open. Then bring your E up to the second fret. So you have that kind of suspended sound. That was our turnaround. That gets it, recycles it, gets it ready to play it again. You start with the first string and third string. So we start with first and third. First and third open to the second to the uh, second string and the fourth string. Third fret with your third and fourth fingers. We're playing thirds here. Then we come down to first fret and second fret, same strings. Now open. Then we do a little bass riff. Down to an E7. Then back into the song. Next variation of the A minor or the body of the song. So I do a little double stop at the end there for a little variation. And just like before, we go to part two. Bend, E, and I do a hammer on the third string, and grace note on the first string, back to Then we do our beginning our term phrase. Now we come to the bridge of the song. So he does a dynamic pause on the A minor chord. So it's, then we hammer on, hammer on the fifth string, third fret, to an open fourth string, second fret, hammer, to open third string, back to A minor. E7. Hammer again, and 
and I do a forward slide to an open third string, back slide, then hammer from second to third fret on fifth strings, then open to E7. Now we come to the second variation of the main body of the song. And what I like to do here are pull-offs all the way through. Then we go to part two again. Then we start the turn. Then we turn around. Now we're going to go to the ending so we extend this. Then go to F, then open, back to second and fourth strings. And then we go to an E chord here, an E7. And what I do is I mute it a little bit and move it up and then pull it at the end. And then we come to our ending phrase. So what I do here is I use a rake. Once again. So it's a rake forward, so it's a percussive rake. You want to get the percussion out of your right hand and also a little bit out of your left so you don't bear down at the frets. Just on the top string. Bend at the second string at the eighth fret, and I use all four fingers to do this bend. Little fingers just not strong enough sometimes. Down to fifth fret, to eighth fret on third string, 7th fret, 5th fret, now I bar all the first three strings and then I put my little finger at the 8th fret on the 3rd string and I do a backslide, playing all three strings. So we have... Once again... Then you come to your chords at the end. We have a suspended A minor chord here. And then we have this jazz chord, which is really pretty. So you have first finger at the fifth fret on the third string, second finger at the seventh fret on the seventh, uh, excuse me, on the fourth string, third finger on the seventh fret on second string, and little finger on the seventh fret at first string. So, and I just go through them kind of slowly. So the ending once again. So I'm gonna play the song one more time for you. I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit, not play it at speed. Uh, so it's a song that you can play fast or slow, sounds kind of nice either way, so I'm going to go about medium tempo.
to have it. Davy Graham's Angie. Uh, I will answer emails as I can get them or as I can get to them. Um, Except the crazy ones, except, you know, the crazy people who really like to flame you on the Internet. People get brave when they send emails. Uh, but I will, you know, I'll, I'll honor all the emails that I possibly can if you have questions about the song. You know, one thing to, to really, that I really have to stress is people get sheets of music and they look at the whole thing. And they just get overwhelmed by four or five pages of notes. Break this down into individual components. When you play part one, play it like a loop. Just keep playing it. Even though it's played only four times in each section, play it 10, 20, 30 times before you learn on to try to learn part two. Make sure you can get the song down. Uh, part, part one is the body of the song. And then when you get to part two, do the same thing with it. Play each individual section as many times as you possibly can before it makes you sick. Uh, that's the only way to learn a song, so go a section at a time. Uh, I always tell people, understand the chord progression. Go a measure at a time, go a line at a time, go a section at a time. So don't overwhelm yourself by trying to learn the entire song uh, the first time you sit down with it. Uh, get a section and write it till you just can't stand it anymore, and it'll come to you. So if you have questions, drop me an email. I will try to answer it. Good luck with Angie. It's a great song. Uh, it's a living proof that all guitar songs don't have to be uh, the hardest things in the world to play to have a great time with. It's a great song. Uh, it's not classical music, so it won't fall apart if you edit it a little bit differently than somebody else would. It doesn't have to be note for note what somebody else plays. Put your own personality in it. It is the blues. Have fun with it. Thank you.